thank you very much, Camilla, and thank you for your presentations. And I too want to welcome the fifth and sixth year students uh, here who I met earlier on. Uh, it's very important that you're here, so thanks for taking the time out. And I saw the Leave Insert student there in particular nodding to much of the stuff that you were saying, Paul, there in relation to the anxiety and the stress around Leave Insert. And I think the remarkable thing is, I think it was um, on your, in, in your presentation where, where you outline, you know, it, it was 19, 1992 when we committed to promoting uh, all the children's rights, including the right to health, and which was ratified at the, the United Nations. All these uh, young people weren't born at that time. They weren't even born. And here we are still uh, talking about what we're going to do about it. And then when the committee in 2016, uh, when it was examined by the committee, again, um, I doubt if, 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 if these uh, young people had started uh, secondary school or was just into it. And I think, you know, we have just so many, and I want to talk to you about your pilot project in a moment, but we've had so many pilot projects We've had so many. It, it really, really is is disgraceful. But I think this, even though we have been looking at this now for a number of weeks in terms of these particular sessions around it, some new things again have been thrown up today uh, that I want to discuss uh, with you. And I suppose, Anya, in the first instance, um, um, you talked about uh, your work with parents and with the 3,000 parents uh, in attending the sessions each year. So I just want to ask you to provide some further details on those sessions, where they're held, and who they're delivered by, and that. Maybe I'll ask my questions first and then give you a chance to answer. The other thing I want to ask you, Anya, is around the risks of piloting the single council interventions rather than the wraparound whole of community approach. Because I too have a lot of concerns about this and where money is allocated and then it's the, the hours are bought in and that's job done. And here we will be in 15, 20 years' time again discussing the same issues around this. Um, and that's not only primary, secondary, but also tertiary level. And we really all collectively need to guard against that. That has to be stopped because that is not a solution to what we, we need. Hilary, you spoke about the wider social issues there um, and housing was mentioned. And I'd just like to ask you just in terms of the housing, the escalating uh, housing uh, challenges, how that is impacting um, your work um, there and how that maybe has changed uh, over the years. So maybe I'll just start with uh, with those questions and just maybe the cost of the model that you're doing, how long has it been running for and how do we make sure that it's, uh, it's mainstream, that it's just not contained to there. And I really like the idea of the cluster schools together as we already have, but I particularly like the idea of the secondary and the feeder primaries working together because then you have a history, you have a knowledge you, to be able to provide the support, supports that are needed and to target them in the way that they're needed to be done. So, thanks. Okay, um, so, so the first question was around our parent sessions. Yes. So, we, uh, in 2012, we started doing sessions with parents uh, supported by the Department for Education around anti-bullying, and mm. it was part of the new action plan on, on, on bullying. And when we started doing those sessions, we were talking about things like resilience with children and how to promote it, and we touched on it, and sort of active listening and developing that parent-child relationship. And what parents told us, they wanted more of that. Um, they wanted to know more about about how to support their children's positive mental health. So at that time, we partnered with St. Patrick's Mental Health Services, which is, I suppose, the background to why our report was written together, is because we've been working for some time now together on that. And we developed the session with St. Patrick's Mental Health Services, so our understanding of parenting and St. Patrick's expertise around mental health services and supporting young people and children in that area. And we now deliver those sessions in school um, with groups of parents. We have a panel of trainers that do a lot of other training that we do as well, um, and they deliver those sessions face to face. Over COVID, we did them online. We weren't quite sure whether they'd be effective online, but they showed to be exceptionally effective. So we now have a mixed model. Some of the sessions we do online some of the sessions we do in schools with groups of parents and um, they get very very positive um, evaluations from the parents we evaluate all sessions so that's continued and in, in recent years in the last three years we've also extended that to early years so we now provide a, a different session to parents of children of early years about how
how to promote positive mental health with young children and carry that on through. So they, they, they've been working very well. Um, in terms of the, the, I suppose, the single counselling sessions, I think what what the difficulty with this is we're, we're responding to two different things. We're trying to respond to early intervention and prevention, which is the model that we're looking at in the clustering. But also we know that there's a lot of children and young people in crisis at the moment. And I think that's where sometimes ideas of the kind of the single the counselling sessions come out of. It's the desire to help those children in crisis at the moment. Because we know setting up a cluster model it's not going to take a long time, but for that child experiencing the difficulty now. So we're constantly balancing between the two of trying to support the child in crisis now, but also develop a long-standing model. So I see where the single counselling sessions ha has come from. My concern about it is that um, it, it's not a well-governed system. So you, you buy it in, it comes in, but who's responsible? Who's responsible for the qualifications of those counsellors? Who's responsible for the supervision and guidance of that, that support in the school? Um, and making sure that the, the, the student in the middle of it is getting the most effective support they need. Um, how, how does the principal access it? it it's not a principal's um, area of expertise to know counselling services and which ones to bring in. And that, so that, that, that's a concern. But also when you look at the, at the model that's talking about clustering schools and putting wraparound services in, you're talking about supporting teachers in their role, um, you're talking about supporting the students in individual and group work, and you're also support, supporting parenting. And and that model for, for better outcomes for children has been shown evidenced to, to have a much bigger impact. And I think it's, it's that sense that we've shifted from understanding that actually the supports need to be where the child is, which is the school, not in a health centre somewhere, um, to now having to understand, well, what are the best supports in that, that centre to have? And I think making sure that they're multidisciplinary um, and uh, approaching that early intervention prevention piece is really essential in that. So that's, I yes. hope that answers the question. It does, it partly will come in again, but I just want to ask Hilary in terms of, of your model um, and, and what? Our model is bespoke in that it responded to the needs of the individual pupils in the school. So I am currently acting principal and I've been the deputy principal, the home school liaison coordinator, but also a junior infant teacher for years. So I suppose one of the big things we saw when you're, we speak about housing and homelessness, when the housing crisis started, there's the hidden homelessness in my Ross. The houses were knocked, but it's the intergenerational families all remaining together in, in the home where you started to see development mental delays for some of the children because there was just no space even to go down on the ground and learn to crawl. Or if you were living between Nana's house and Mam's house during the day, you might spend a lot of time in your stroller or your buggy going up and down. You just and it was the PHNs and the, the local SLTs who noticed this and were pointing it out to us in school. So this is where we constantly developed and evolved our mo model to support our families. We brought in our own play therapy. We brought in our own adult counsellor, the parish priest at the time. She worked from the back of the church at the time. We've now our own dedicated family centre, but she became known as the lady at the back of the church. Mm -hmm. So as and the homeschool liaison coordinator, Tiernan, our current principal, who he seconded to the council at the moment, he was the homeschool liaison coordinator who was going out into the homes and really realising what the need was on the ground. So this, it has constantly evolved as we see the need. Uh, while in, it was became apparent that housing and employment often were the fundamental reasons why people came looking for counselling and supports and why children were suffering from anxiety and low self-esteem. So we then realised we needed a family support worker in addition to the homeschool liaison coordinator dedicated to that piece alone, the housing and the support. So again, another philanthropic funder mm. supported us with our family support worker. And from that has evolved into that purse, that key worker is now working with local companies in Limerick, including Johnson & Johnson to Kumi, and they're offering bespoke employment opportunities, and we're working with the ETB around an access to apprenticeship down with My Ross Youth Academy. So this just didn't happen overnight. Mm. This is The school is there since 1983. I'm there since 1987. This has grown, and this has grown from a philosophy and an ethos. Now, we're very lucky, and I will take this point, that our clinical psychologist does everything pro bono. And we're the first school in Ireland, so he provides all the supervision, but that is provided at pro bono to the school and always has been. Our assistant psychologist is HSE funded. It's a grant that we apply for every year. 
and we were very fortunate that we're the first school in Ireland to have received that. And then we keep applying for different philanthropic grants to grow our play therapy, but even those within the play therapy, they're all unique to each therapist. They will have a different training and a different background. And we recently employed a youth mental health worker, which I think, talking to Anya, is very similar to the model there. Our youth mental health worker happens to be, has a psychology degree but they're using sport and CBT and a variety of different methodologies to connect and build relationships with children, primarily focused around the transition into secondary school. And we're researching at the moment, due to publish at the end of the year, a report, an independent report, um, conducted research through Mary Immaculate on this program. And some of the key findings, we've interviewed past pupils that transition piece is so huge in children's lives. You have to be there to support the children. And the next phase, we've just, Rethink Ireland have been great to help us with strategic planning and learning how, we, like we were teachers, we weren't thinking of it from the business side and how you get your funding. So they've really supported us to look um, across, uh, uh, different systems, but we were, our next three-year plan, we're looking at continuing and supporting our teenagers in the community, our past pupils, to come back into the school. They can mm. use the hub, and that's done again. It's, we cluster with home, uh, our local secondary school and the school's completion project. So we're using everything that's out there, and it's mm. a working synergy and bringing mm. everything together. So we're more like the frugal housewife, mm. looking at what mm. we have, and it, ultimately it's all built with relationships on the ground, and really yeah. key people who've worked together over the last 20 years, yeah. putting Excellent. the children at the center. Okay. Thank you.